This is a HeadGum Podcast. Hello and welcome to Perfect Person, the show where I'm perfect and you're a person... This morning, I had a frozen bagel. Word. And I put it in the toaster to keep it extra fresh, fresh. Because people don't may not know this, but if you keep a bagel in the fridge or you keep a bagel on the counter, Quasi, it's yeah. absolutely going to be going stale. Mm-hmm. But if you put that puppy in the freezer, if you put that puppy in the Arctic, if you put that puppy in the back of the icebox... Then it's going to be toasting up moisture style. I'm sitting here with Quazy James. Quazy, welcome to the show. Who are you, dude? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? You putting your bagels in the freezer? That came out of your mind? Absolutely. <laughs> you- <laughs> no. You know? Uh, after you toast it? Well, no, no, after crazy. <laughs> yeah, I toast the bagel, put it in the freezer, and then I put it out of the freezer, and I put it in the toaster. And oh, I put it, no, I when the bagel, you get the bagel from the bagel store. Yeah, it's in a bagel bag. Yes, it is. And then I put it in the bagel bag. I'm thinking, okay, day one, I'm enjoying the bagel. Day two, uh, I don't know if I want to eat all these bagels. Let me put them, slice them, because you don't want to have a frozen bagel that's unsliced. And that's going to be rule one for you. Crazy. I need to think about that. You're going to want to take the bagel. You're going to want to slice it and then put it into the freezer in a bag. That way, you are taking the moisture, and you're going, you are capturing the moisture. You are keeping the moisture frozen inside the bagel, almost like a like an ice age, when a saber-toothed tiger is sort of I see. frozen. You're playing chess, and I'm playing we're playing checkers. 100%. I, did, I didn't think about that. That makes so much sense. Yeah, and then when you want it, you just take that puppy out of the freezer, put it right in the toaster, and the toaster's saying, uh, yeah, I'll toast the puppy, but I'm also defrosting it because of heat. Interesting, and it's <laughs> fresh. How long could it last, you think? I mean, in the freezer? A fucking million years. I don't know. Right. I feel that is always the interesting when I go, how long can I keep something in the freezer? <laughs> and people are just sort of like, I don't fucking know, forever, right? And I, that can't be true, but that is what I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shit. Okay. Crazy. Welcome to the show. <laughs> That was amazing. Yeah. Wow, that came out of your mind. Of course. Well, I always try to give people a sort of little taste of what I'm working with. How, you, did, you did that today? The yeah, I did it this morning. The I whole t- bag? The whole, well, no, no, no. Yesterday I froze them. And this morning I took it out of the freezer and put it in the toasty. Regular degula bagel or is it like This raisins? was actually a, a poppy seed. Oh, bagel. yeah. Don't take a blood test now. Which I Because the heroin, right? Mm-hmm. There's a whole thing where if you have a poppy seed bagel, then theoretically you can test positive for heroin. I don't know if that's even true, but right. it's an urban legend. Yeah. Uh, but no, I had the if I see bagel and I did do a schmear of cream cheese. Ah, uh, just a little bit? A, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm putting that on big time. Uh, put any jelly on that cream cheese? Brooklyn no, style. I didn't do jelly, but that's how I grew up was doing jelly and cream cheese. You have New York City people in your family? Uh, I do. They're all from Rochester, New York. So uh, not the city, but upstate. the upstate. So they're still into bagels mm. by way of proxy. <laughs> Crazy, uh, welcome to the show. You were been on once before, but you're one of my favorite people. You, uh, you're very inspiring to me. You have a positive attitude uh, almost all the time. How so? Whoa, whoa, talk about that. I feel like you exude positivity, and uh, and you know what you exude? You exude a curious interest in the joy of other people's lives. That's I feel like so. you you step into a room and you go, "Wow, how how is this true about you?" Or what's your? You just have a very curious affectation every time I see you and you're you're filled to the freaking brim overflowing with a positivity that I really admire affectation <laughs> Hell, word of the day thank you but um crazy uh what have you been doing recently uh, that you feel qualifies you as a perfect person to be on the show today yeah. to take people's calls and answer them flawlessly oh what a man <laughs> <sighs> no pressure no pressure. Uh, well, uh, I started a few companies. You started a few companies. That's amazing. Yeah. That's yeah, great. Yeah. Own some land. You own some land. Yeah. You're a pa- landowner. Pa- yes, I am a <laughs> land. I own earth. I own, <laughs> I own a earth. piece of this earth. Nice. Um, I thought once about being like, I looked, I was like, what's the cheapest land you can have? 
And it was like, hey, you can buy a fucking middle of the desert. It's like two grand. That's exactly what I did. By the, did you do that? <laughs> yeah, Wait, yeah, no yeah, fucking that's way. That's serious. What did you, why? Are you going to build land, something on it? If I mean, the, the, <laughs> the like, overhead is so fucking low. I don't have to do anything. <laughs> Actually, I make money not doing anything with it because somebody probably wants to buy it. I bought <laughs> a few lots in the middle of other lots. Yeah. So I'm... I'm fucking somebody over from getting all the lots. So they want to <laughs> buy it for me just to have all the lots. That in its own is the hustle. Got it. So you're like, there's a bigger area and you're like, I'm actually just going to buy a little sliver. Yes. You're buying a gerrymandered lot. Yes. <laughs> in the middle. I'm in the way. And, and where is the, is this like in the middle of the desert? Is it, where is this? Yeah, it's in the middle of the desert. It has a few homes around it. So it's not like that desolate. It's yeah. not, it still has like, there's water running to the area. Got it, sure. Yeah, yeah. So uh had a bunch of money in COVID because I didn't travel that much. Yeah, right. Threw on some land. <laughs> now I own a piece of the earth. <laughs> and it's fun. I plan on doing it some more in other places. You can build a little doomsday bunker in there. Boom. Or not do anything. <laughs> or just leave it. And <laughs> yeah, it's your yeah. land. My wife and I sometimes walk the land and like uh <laughs> things get caught in our pans. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's like rabbits everywhere. Yeah. yeah. There's, it's desolate out there. Yeah, yeah. Put your money. Yeah, I want some land. So invest I'm in a little bit of land. I know that isn't. Hurt. There's a lot of. Uh, I, I I often have. I have dreams of owning land or owning a house or you can do it. something along those lines. That would be nice. I, I and I often like. I'm like, what if everything really goes down and there's some sort of really horrible event that pushes Los Angeles into the San Andreas Fault or whatever? Where would I retreat to if I had a little piece of land with like a little hut on it? That would be extra convenient. You want to live in a hut? Or like a zombie apocalypse. Everything <laughs> yeah. is like, I guess I'm going to need a hut with running water and like a PlayStation or something. Where, if a zombie apocalypse hits, I'm, I'm going to give up. No, I'm, I'm going to say fu fuck it. I've seen all the films. I know how you do it. You, you, you know how to win. Not how I win know how to fucking fight these guys, right? It's stressful. But they're cowards, man. Yeah. They're fucking cowards. Well, Quazy, <laughs> yeah. um, I appreciate you being on the show. Uh, we're going to get to the phone lines because they're ringing off the damn hook. Boom. But before we do, uh, if you like the show, please consider rating and subscribing so you don't miss an episode. And if you love the show, the best thing you can do is join our Patreon where there are bonus episodes of the show every single Friday where I do wacky, weird, incredible stuff. I call back people from the show to get updates on how my advice changed their life. And there's also extended ad-free versions of every single episode, including this one, where Quazy and I kind of got into it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> about my in, impending 30s <laughs> and how they're going to go. Um, but uh, yeah, join the Patreon to get all that cute stuff. But until then, we are going to take to the phone lines. Uh, Let go. This is a person who is worried that they lied to their coworker for seemingly no reason, and they're going to get caught in that lie. Let's do it. Hey, Miles. At work, I lied to a person that I work closely with that I'm from Canada, and I'm really worried about getting caught in the lie. So give me a call back. Thanks. <laughs> now, I'm confused about, one, why they why? lie. Why would they say that and why? then not back down? And then if they get caught, like, are they too deep in the lie? Yeah. You know? Did they continue? Yeah, I guess. We're going to have to give them a call back and get a couple more pieces of information. Yet. Oh, my gosh. This is amazing. <laughs> I love this show. Thank you. Yeah. Hello? Hello. You called Perfect Person, and I'm here to call you back to fix your life. I'm here with Quazy James. What up? Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going? I'm so sorry. Can I not, can I not curse? Oh, you can absolutely curse. Do you think that I don't curse on this show? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I curse. Yeah, no, I listen to it. Hi, <laughs> Quazy. It's yeah. so nice that you're here. Yo, yo, yo. What up? What up? What up? Um, well, so it seems you have a little lie that you've told at your workplace, and we're going to give you a fake name so that we're going to keep you anonymous because <laughs> uh, you're a liar and you're lying at work, and that's actually illegal for you to have. But we're going to call you Troy. Troy, what is good? Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm at work right now, which is actually in Times Square, so it might be a little bit loud, but I can I can talk. Oh my god, you work in Times Square? What do you do? Uh, it's it, it's kind of complicated. <laughs> I work for a ticketing company that buys tickets at box offices. Uh, I'm not going to say the name of it. 
you buy tickets and then you resell them? Uh, no, no, they're not. It's not resell. It's not like I'm a scalper. I gotcha. People buy through our app and then I buy the tickets for them. Oh, gotcha. So they can reserve through some sort of third party and then you're sort of just bringing those. Yeah, t- you're yeah. bringing those tickies to Broadway to the people who got them. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Now, what was the lie you told and why? <sighs> To start off, because of my job, I go around to all of the different Broadway box offices, and there's a particular old man at one of the box offices. He's known to be a little bit curmudgeon He kind of, like, hates us and, like, is really mean to us. Gotcha. Uh, so one day, about, like, a few weeks ago, it was, like, in the 90s, and he comes back in from his smoke break, and he's like, I can't believe New York. It's so freezing out there. And I was like, oh, really? I think it's pretty hot. And he was like, where are you from that you think this is hot? (laughs) What? (laughs) So I'm from Texas. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm from Texas. And I thought this man is going to hate me if I say I'm from Texas. Right. So I said, I'm from Canada. Nice. Okay. Perfect. And he lit up. He was like so excited at that. Like he was like, (laughs) Yeah, I guess this is pretty hot from where you're coming from. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, he loved that. It was like not what he was expecting. Yeah, he loved that all. little fact. And then he like kept on. So where in uh, Canada are you from? I said Medicine Hat, Alberta, because that's where my friend from Canada is from. Okay. So I was really good at the lie. <laughs> and then you he was like, that's great and then he got one of the other box office guys. He was like, hey, hey, you're from Canada. Come here. No way. And. So he's got the whole box office in on the fact that I'm from Canada. The other guy was like, hey, can you tell your country to stop being on fire? Because we got a lot of bad, like, oh, smoke oh, coming down from Canada actually right now. That, yeah. And I said, and then I furthered it. I said, oh, yeah, I know all about that because my brother's a firefighter in oh, Canada. Oh, my God. Oh, shit. <laughs> that is such a specific lie. You just kept it going. <laughs> yeah, I don't have a brother who is not a firefighter. <laughs> okay. Sure. And to further this, I was really worried because I was training a guy that day who actually knows me from college. Yeah. And whenever I came back to the box office, I didn't brief him beforehand oh. that I was in this lie. Yeah. Whenever they started talking about Canada, <laughs> my friend, he just started looking at me like, what's going on? Do they think you're somebody else? But I got through with it. I didn't get caught, but I'm worried that every single time I go back there, I'm going to have to get further and further into this lot. Yeah. It sounds like, I mean, you're in, you're in a tricky place here because one, this is someone that you like only see when you are doing your job. Mm. They're not really your coworker, but they're just sort of like affiliated with the work that you do. You sort of, uh, when when you can unlock an asshole, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? when you can sort of go to someone that is bad and mean and cruel and you can unlock their little key so that they get to be a nice interested you know civilian that is uh that's a power that's mm-hmm. power to wield well and you don't want to betray that power by letting them know that you're from texas that being said absolutely you're gonna have to keep up this lie yeah i think that probably like the best thing for you to do is to keep it real simple and stick to the facts. I, I agree. And also, if this person is ever to call you out on like, wait, I thought you said you were from Little Rock, you know, whatever, then you can just be like, yeah. no, I didn't say that I said this because you were the orchestrator of the lie. <laughs> you know what I mean? Ugh. Yeah, sure. And I, I don't I don't mind going into a little bit of a lie. Like, I... I kind of have a problem where I maybe get a little bit of excitement saying a lie. <laughs> yeah, it seems like it. So <laughs> this you're, isn't like you're the first bad, time I've done this. I bet. Wait, so, okay, so <laughs> you are you're right. Honestly, you might be the first justified pathological lie. <laughs> it is. Oh thing. wait. <laughs> and I know I shouldn't tell you this because yeah. it's dangerous. Yeah. But I do think that your lie in this instance was for your own benefit. Lies can be good if they're for your own benefit. (laughs) Okay? Now, what are some of the other lies that you've told? 
And how close have you well, flown to the sun? If you know what I mean. Um, that, the Canada one is honestly the, probably the closest I've flown to the sun. Okay. Mm. But a couple of weeks ago, I was at a different box office. <laughs> It's only, and by the way, the box I office people are getting fleeced. <laughs> you are fucking... Well, we're kind of bored, so they're asking about our personal life You're all right. the time. But yeah, sure. This wasn't a box office person. This was like an usher. I turn around after buying tickets. <laughs> the usher says, hey, didn't I seat you yesterday? And I was like, I didn't go to that show yesterday. So yeah. I didn't know what she was talking about. But without a beat, I said, oh, how funny. That's my twin brother. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh shit! <laughs> right, and, and and I was like, "Yeah, my twin brother." Kate, and she like lit up. Like, I think I like lying for the purposes of like giving a person a fun story that they can tell later. Yeah, yeah, right. You're you're sort of you're you're lying for. I mean, they're white lies, I guess. Yeah. Well, I guess <laughs> I guess a white lie constitutes that it's like a small lie. These are big this lies big that you're lies. telling, <laughs> but they don't have really any repercussions. Like for her to know that. Oh, actually, we didn't see you. Doesn't matter you until know, she right? finds out he doesn't have a twin brother. Yeah, but that doesn't I matter kind of either. Felt like it would have been more awkward to say, "No, you didn't." Yeah, then no, I have this that. like serendipitous moment that she can like go back to her husband and be like, "You won't believe this like crazy little moment." Be right, because she and won't I think believe it because it's not true. <laughs> more than just a white lie. That's like a good lie. Well, that's right? like, and uh, I mean, Quasi, do you ever tell little white lies or you sort of miss your truth all the time? And for example, I will say when I introduce myself to people or if somebody introduces themselves to me and they go, oh, I think we've met before. I, if I haven't met them, I'll just go, oh yeah, definitely, definitely uh, at, at the thing. Oh, I love awkward moments. Yo, you love oh, awkward I, I, moments? Oh, I want, I want to sit in it. Oh, it's Like, crazy. oh, I don't know who you are. Oh, crazy. I, oh, God. Like, remind me again. The thought of that makes me sweat. Oh, I know. I Because oh, yeah, yeah. I'm not confident <laughs> enough in my own mind to remember that I am remembering correctly. I, I would sit in it. Mm. Eat it up. So you'd just be like, we've never met before. What the hell are you talking like, about? Get away from me. I was like, I never met you in my life. <laughs> no. Uh, I yeah. love awkward moments. But I would say, yeah, keep going with the lie. Yeah, you got to. Go out, buy yourself some denim. Matching top, matching bottom. Get <laughs> sure. a Canadian <laughs> sure. tuxedo going on. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, come to work with just bacon. <laughs> Sometimes Big Canadian bacon, some Canadian Ham. bacon. Sure. Yeah. Learn about the politics. I think the mayor of Toronto was uh, yeah. some guy Ford. He did crack. Oh yeah. He smoked crack. He smoked crack. Who's the mayor who smoked crack. Yeah. Bring, bring that up. Yeah, randomly. That up. You'd say Justin uh, Trudeau. Just, I know that name. Justin it, Trudeau didn't smoke crack. Though. He didn't smoke crack, but he has a really good heel. <laughs> well, no, I, I, I didn't, you know, I didn't accuse Justin Trudeau of smoking crack. You heard it here first people. <laughs> 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 Justin Trudeau smokes crack. It's going to be the title of the episode. No. Um, I, uh, yeah, I think you got to continue the lie, throw in some A's here, but I honestly well, think that in this instance, when you're dealing with people, People that are like so tangential to your experience. Yeah. Little lies are fine. Yeah. As long as they're not little lies that you're going to have to pay the price on. True. You know and, I mean? and utilize this as like a research, right? Just like say, oh, Tim Hortons is way better than Starbucks. Let's say that shit. Yeah. That's going to work yeah, easily. Yeah. That's going to be. Oh, yeah. I went down to Tim Hortons, got some little Timmy. That's what I'm talking about. There yeah, we go. Drops, have fun. Well, like I it. said, my friend, one of my friends, he's from Canada. That's where I got the town name from. So <laughs> I can ask him and get some real like details that I can just mingle in there. You know, you should be on Broadway. Yeah. By the way, are you auditioning? Um, I am. Yeah, I'm an actor. That's Damn. why I came here. Nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, yeah, because you, you, you can just live in the character. You can live in the theater. Well, thank you so much for calling in, and I do appreciate uh, your lies to <laughs> the people of the box office. I think you got to just keep telling those fibs, because honestly, they don't seem to be fibs that are hurting anybody, and honestly, the only fibs you need to worry about are the fibs that hurt someone. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Yo, and yo, that's great. If you see me in Times Square one day, hook a brother up with some tickets. Yeah, that's right. Hook us up with some tickets. You know I'd I mean? love to see a Broadway show. It's been a fucking, fucking forever since. I've, what's your favorite thing on Broadway right now, by the way? Well, I really love Hades Town, but actually, last night I went and saw Back to the Future. 
And it kind of fucking slapped. Oh, that's awesome like, to see that. Okay, cool. It was a bad musical, yeah. but I had the time of my life. Oh, that rocks. Okay, cool. I got to get back to Broadway and see yeah. some stuff. Same here. Well, uh, thank you so much for calling in, and you have a fantastic uh, day out there in Times Square. Bless up yourself. Great. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. All Bye, right. guys. Bye. Oh, man, that's too funny. Yeah. I mean, I've definitely been there where, like, I remember in college, just because I would meet people that I just knew I was never going to meet again. I'd just mm-hmm. be like, hey, my name's Dean. Oh, yeah, I used to do that, too. Yeah, because it was just like, we're not, like, it doesn't really matter, right? Like, I'm never going to see you again, True. most likely. I uh, I was insecure about my name in second grade, so I let... You were? Yeah, so I, I told a teacher to call me Tommy. From Power Rangers, the Green Ranger. Quasi, <laughs> you poor thing. I know. I was, I was like, because there was no one else named Quasi. And I was like, Fuck. it's a very unique name. It's, it's a very great unique name. name. Yeah. The, the unique and the proudness came later. But I was like, yeah, I want to be Tommy from Power Rangers. So call me Tommy. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> call me Tommy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. We're going to take another call here. This is someone who's dealing with a crush mm. on someone. And they're wondering if they fumbled the bag. Oh, yeah. Hey, Miles. Um, I fumbled a response to a compliment from my crush, and he never texted back after that happened. So I need to know if I should text him back and say something better or leave it be. Please help me. Thank Man, you. Flirting can be a whirlwind, people. Mm-hmm. It can be an absolute nightmare out there if you're trying to flirt. Quasi, um, what's your flirting style when you're sort of sending a text? Now, obviously, you're a married man. Yeah, yeah. But when you were out there in the field wooing your wife. Yeah, yeah. I met her at USC yeah. at a tailgating thing, one of my first football events yeah. I ever went to. And we bumped into each other and we started talking. And uh, so I'm texting her to link up with her. So yeah. that, and she, think, she thinks I want to link up with her that night. And I left her on a cliffhanger. I was like, hey. <laughs> You ready for it? <laughs> you ready for the fly shit? Absolutely. I was like, hey, um, like I really want to see you. Yeah. And I left it dot dot dot. Ooh. And then just waited for a little bit <laughs> tomorrow morning for breakfast. You know what I mean? And no one crazy, that's the hottest shit I've ever heard. No one really takes anyone out for breakfast. You know what I mean? Took out the squirrel. And also it's like, by the way, love squirrel. I have good taste. Great toast. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Took out the squirrel. You know what I mean? Little wine and dining, you know what I mean? No brunch, no other dinner. Take out to breakfast. Let's talk, yo. I love a breakfast date, by the way. And I'll also say that's nothing very cool about being like, I want to see you, dot, dot, dot. And she's thinking, oh, he's going to booty call me. Yep. Tomorrow. Yep. She didn't know. She didn't. I I, I saw her. I saw her. (laughs) This is going to be my wife. I didn't know what time it was. Yeah. I I put on, I trained for this. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. 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 All my, all relationships was for this. Was training for this. Exact moment. You're a Marine in the field. Big time. Honestly, with, so uh, with my wife, we made, we made it a party and uh, I, on our like first or second, we went on one date and we went on a second date. And on the second date, I went to pick her up at her house and uh, our now best friend Kendall answered the door because Sarah was hadn't gotten in the shower yet. Right. And Sarah at one point came out and a towel and went, sorry, I'm just hopping in the shower, <laughs> ran, back in the, <laughs> ran back in to jump in the shower. Super funny. So then Kendall was entertaining me and she was like asking me questions. She was like, oh, like, how are you? Like, where are you from? Whatever. We're talking. And she was like, honestly, <clears throat> I'm waiting. She was like, I'm waiting for a guy to call me. Like, why don't guys just call anymore? And yeah. Sarah like, had come out of the show. She was like, yeah, that's so weird. Like, guys really just don't call anymore or whatever. So then I called her and left her a voicemail that was like, it was like maybe three days later, I just called her and was like, hey, I remember uh, that you said that guys don't call anymore. And I just want to say I had a really great time. And I like so- left her a long voicemail. And then I didn't hear back from her for like, over 24 hours. And I was like, <laughs> holy shit, I'm the biggest loser fucking ever. Like, I was like, I left a vo- you left a voicemail on someone's phone? Like, what an idiot. Like, how could I do And it was because she had gone out to a concert, lost her phone, or oh, it, wow. it had died, and she was like out for a long time. And then finally she got back to her car where her phone was because she was staying at a friend's house. Yeah. It was like an old thing. And she got it, and then she said she like, Played the whole voicemail for the whole car, and they were all like, "Oh, that's so cute!" I know it's very cute. Yo, you you got you got you got game. What can I say? You listen, hey baby, I'm giving you a call. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, let's give this person a call here and here, see if we can help them be extra flirtatious to their crush. Let's do it. 
Are you so for real right now? Literally what is good. <laughs> it's perfect for sin. I'm here with Quazy James, and we're here to solve your problems. Yo, what up? Oh, my God. Hi, guys. This is awesome. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> now, tell me about your situation, and we're going to give you a fake name, and it's going to be Quazy. Shantae. Shantae. Shantae, why don't you tell us what's going on? Let me give a little backstory. So this crush that I have yeah. is like, it kind of started parasocial, but we've met in person like several times now too. Oh, interesting. Um, yes. And if, so I can't say a ton about what they do. This but, person's in, but this person is some sort of digital internet creator, <laughs> obviously, right? Uh, yeah, let's, <laughs> let's go with that. Yeah. Okay, that got it. <laughs> And we all know who it is. Um, it's Tana Mojo. No, I'm just kidding. Keep, <laughs> keep, keep talking. That's perfect. <laughs> a year ago or so, I was at an event that they were at, mm -hmm. and he went up to a an employee at that space and pointed me out and said, can you find out who that person is? <gasps> um, and so he slid into my DMs. <laughs> Whoa. And I, I do have a question. I mean, you don't have to say exactly, but like, is yes. this person a, a big personality in their space that they're occupying online? I don't want to say like big, but they're, they're fairly popular. They yeah. are fairly popular. Okay, cool. So they're fairly popular. So it's, yeah. it's like, uh -huh. uh, it's not like they occupy a small niche and you are one of the people in that niche. Mm. Correct. Got it. Okay, yeah. cool. Got it. And they found you out of the crowd and they said so that one. <laughs> find out who that is. Yeah. Mm. Got a cool, very movie moment. Yes. Yes. And so we met like after the event and we had actually met once like years previous and he brought that up. He was like, oh, when I looked through, like I, I remember that we got pizza at this place once like years ago in this city. And I was like, how do you remember that? And he said, cause it's when I first met you. Ooh, <laughs> wow. Uh, Holy shit. Yeah. Throwing you lobs. <laughs> okay. But <laughs> yes. So when he slid into my DMs like a year ago, I was in a relationship. Yeah. That was like the first thing that he asked. He was like, I want to be very respectful of that. So I'm not going to cross any of your boundaries, but like, let me know if that ever changes. Mm, interesting. Um, so I told him a little while ago that my situation changed. Uh -huh. And then recently he replied to one of my Instagram stories and said, <laughs> it was like a throwback photo. And he said, like you were hot then and you're hot now. <sighs> Whoa. And I have a question for you. First of all, <laughs> when you broke up with yeah. your partner, did this person's interest, uh -huh. we're going to call this person, uh, <laughs> your name is Jante. We're going to call this person Dirk. Hey, what up, Dirk? <laughs> okay, so <laughs> I love it. <laughs> when Dirk, when you, when you broke up mm -hmm. uh, with your partner, was Dirk a part mm -hmm. of that in your mind at all? Were you like, well, I mean, Dirk's out there. And he's freaking thirsting over me. Mm, chocolate makes him thirsty. <laughs> That's right. That's the tagline. <laughs> um, it gave me, like, it wasn't part of the reason that partnership ended. Yeah. But after it did, it did kind of make me go, you know what? Like, some, there are there are other options that will find me. You There's know? other Dirks in the sea. Yeah. Word. <laughs> There's other Dirks. Yes. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. Dirk knows that I'm single now. Replied to my Instagram story, said, hot then, hot now. Oh, um, woo, I am it. in the middle, <laughs> I'm in the middle of my first finals week of grad school. Nice. And so my head is like exploding right yeah. now. And then I read that message and I just like, the only thing I said was thank you with like a heart eyes emoji. Uh -huh. And I feel like I should have said something else and he never responded. <laughs> oh, got it. So he said, uh, you're hot. You were hot then you're hot now. And then you said, Thank you, hard eyes emoji. Mm. And then he didn't continue the conversation. But was this an isolated thing where you hadn't talked in a while? We hadn't talked since, let me see. Last time we like really talked was like the end of April. Oh, got I it. was, mm. yeah, I was like in their area and he didn't see like my message until I was already back where I live. Uh, okay. And when he saw it, he was like, Oh my God, that's so exciting. How long are you here for? And I was like, I literally just got back in, in my city. Gotcha. So we talked for a little bit after that. And yeah, I think you still have hope. Oh my God. By the way, you want to know uh, the number one way to freaking get this thing popping. Talk to me. Hey, come over. Holy shit. Just like that. Huh? <laughs> 
three simple words. <laughs> a, one, three simple words, one piece of punctuation. A, <laughs> comma, come over. No period, by the way, because there, because the story no is still no period. It's a run the on story because it's a run on sentence. Hey, come over. Yeah, and then you could add a baby. <laughs> come over, baby. <laughs> but I'll say, if you, this person, by the way, no one in the in their fucking right mind that doesn't want to come over, yeah. is saying you were hot then and you're hot now. Yeah, unless unless they're your bestie and they're gassing you up, but that's not this situation. Yeah, you, you know got time. I mean? You. <laughs> The 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 ball is still in your court. It seems like, yeah. What Dirk? Dirk? Dirk is throwing you the lob. <laughs> Dirk, yeah. And all you got to do is dunk it. Dirk is ready to dunk it. Okay. By the way, dunk it. And all you got to <laughs> give Dirk is a fucking opportunity to come over. You know what I'm talking about? Hey, yo, yeah. Now, it could be hey, come over. Now I understand if you don't want, if you don't want Dirk to come to your house. You could say, hey, meet me for coffee, meet me for drinks. How far away do you live from each other? We live pretty far. Like, we live uh, we live in different states. Like a so flight. Like a flight. If we didn't, yeah, like a flight. Now So do do I take that route then and be like, well, if you're next time you're around and because this has all been messaging on Instagram for the last like year or so. Yeah. Do I say like next time you're around, like text me and like just give him my number? What do I do? I mean, well, here's the thing. I think that this mm-hmm. is this things are heating up here. Yeah, and I'm a believer. In, in, <laughs> I'm a believer in romance. And uh, also, why were you in that city before? Were you just visiting? Um, I was visiting one of my friends that had moved out there a few years ago. Mm. Oh, looks like your friends in for another visit. I was about to say the same, right? Yeah. Because Absolutely. it seems like your friend actually would like you to visit again, with the sole purpose of telling Dirk to come over. But I think, or or also just being like like. I don't know. This feels like something that you've been thinking about a lot and someone you have a big old crush on, right? Uh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Throw some wood on the fire. Yeah. Throw some wood on the fire. Yeah. Don't go over there and say, hey, by the way, I'm going to head, I'm going to, I'm planning a, tr- you know, here you do, here's what you do. I'm planning a trip out there. So that's okay. why you don't have anything planned. You're like, I'm planning a trip out there in fucking August. Yeah. Uh, are you around? <laughs> I would love to buy you coffee. I would love to buy you okay. a fucking muffin. Right. I'd love to get you a ham sandwich <laughs> gratis for being a, my crush. I think Dirk. For being Dirk my crush. Yeah. Dirk puts so much wood on the fire. I think it's your turn to put mm-hmm. some wood on the fire. Yeah. By the way, what was the photo, the throwback photo? Um, it was one of the Instagram prompts that was like, it's 2023, so post you at 23. Ah. So it was oh. a couple pictures of me when I was, yeah, 23 years old. <laughs> hot, hot then, hot now. Whoa. Dirk has got uh-huh. it. Dirk's ready to go. I, 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 this is ready to go. I here's, think. Here's, here's my strategy. Yeah. I'll say. I'll say. Yes. Buying a picture of a couple and <laughs> you, on the captions, you say, and tag Dirk. It's like, this could be us, but you playing. Oh shit! <laughs> Wait, see, this is so funny. This could be us, but you playing, and then like the smirk emoji. Yeah, and hey. then Dirk blocks you. You're like, oh, oh, no, this could be no, us, oh, no. but you playing because you gotta. It seems like Dirk. Dirk wants to make it happen. This <laughs> Dirk wants to make yeah, it happen. Yeah, I'm kind of like. Yeah. yeah, I'm like he kind of like stepped out like with a fairly like forward comment, and I totally did not answer how I would have wanted to answer because I freaked out. Well, here's, That's that energy. Here's a question for you. How would you, okay. in given time, yeah. how would you want to respond to that now? Ooh, good question. I, I You're hot too. Kind of. I At the risk of embarrassing myself, I had kind of thought about being like, hey, I fumbled that response, but I think that the hottest person in this conversation is you, but I'll okay. take a compliment from you any day. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to stop you right there, okay? Uh, what was your Please name? Do. Shantae. 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 I'm going to stop you Shantae. right there and say that, uh-oh, <laughs> I, I disagree <laughs> with your rough draft of a text. And here's why. Okay. Because Please. you are that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you do not need to be telling Dirk that he's the hottest one in the conversation because in a way that's sort of putting yourself down to lift Dirk up. And what uh, you were sort of okay. doing okay. is Dirk has come to you and done something vulnerable. 
you were hot then and you're hot now yeah. is yeah. sort of Dirk serving up Thanksgiving dinner uh -huh. and w waiting for you to eat. Ooh. And what you did with your response of thank you is actually like, in my mm -hmm. mind, if I'm Dirk, I'm going, Ooh, I want, I wonder if she likes me. Right. Oh, cause I think that uh -huh. like that interaction to me does not indicate to Dirk that I'm ready to go. Yeah. 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 But I do think, that, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Which is okay because it's leaving Dirk going, Hmm. Dirk's probably calling into another call and advice podcast going, I did take this big swing. Yeah. And she said, thank you. And I'm like, is she even into me? So that's why you got to hit it up with, I'm, I'm planning a trip to your city and I'd mm -hmm. like to take you out. Keeps Ooh. a little bit of that mystery alive. But sometimes I think in flirtation, okay. you know, if your impulse is to sort of be like, oh no, you're so great. I, I think that flirtation is all about like, you want to build the other person up. But I think that there's nothing cooler yeah. than being able to build them up while maintaining the confidence that you have in yourself. Play a play a play on. Because hey. nothing is Ooh. sexier than confidence. And so if you're like, I think that some people's impulse is to be like, oh my God, you're so great. Like, I, I you know, it, like it's, it, and I think that it's because, I don't know, everyone just exists with a level of insecurity. At mm -hmm. least I do. But I think the, the right mm -hmm. way to go about it is to be like, no, yeah, you know what? You're awesome. And you're meeting me at my level of mm. how fucking cool and hot I am. Damn, you putting me on. And that's yeah. how you're going to get <laughs> Dirk to come over. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, if it was up to me, I would have been like, I would have threw up vulnerability. I'm like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Yeah. I fucked up. Oh my God. <laughs> I should have said oh this. I should have said this. Yeah, Send yeah, Dirk yeah. this episode. Yeah, yeah. No, um, uh, but yeah, I think that uh, you, you can definitely... Like if he posts a story or something, you can definitely comment something flirty on that. I think that's a great opportunity. Or okay. you, you could move this puppy to the next level. You informed Dirk that you were single and ready to go. Yeah. Yes. And Dirk, yeah, I think Dirk's yeah. ready. To, I think Dirk's ready to rock. I'm scared, man. No, don't be scared. Because because if you if you keep if you keep playing the game, mm -hmm. what if what if someone's like, oh, I don't want to play the game anymore. Well, that's why I'm sort of suggesting don't play the game, win the game Ooh. by going to Dirk City and initiating a real life hang. Yo, because meet halfway. You yeah. can meet halfway. New, new spot. Well, although that's also a lot of pressure. To okay. Think, because I think the friend, the friend, so you're being like, let's go to Hawaii. Okay. On an all expenses paid vacation, you and me, Dirk. But I'm saying that if you're like, I'm visiting my friend and I want to see you when I'm there, it takes the pressure off Dirk, uh -huh. takes the pressure off of Shantae. Yeah. It allows Dirk and Shantae to meet in a neutral position, mm -hmm. both having flirted and they are ready mm -hmm. to kiss. <laughs> that is my advice. How are you feeling about that before I let you go? I think that's great. I do actually, because a couple of my friends had been talking about maybe going like out there again sometime like this like early like winter mm -hmm. i got two fart sounds and two sparkles i'm so excited <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean you can, yeah you can, you can, you can, you can, yes you, you deserve them you earned the, you earned every single one <laughs> you can wall bump this relationship before you go out there though just be like finals week this week and then next week is on a taboo time or some shit i don't know like I, 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 I don't want <laughs> Dirk to back speak. out. I don't want Dirk to be like, yo, I'm doing too much. Yeah. Let me, I, I, I put all my cards in the table. I got mm -hmm. an emoji and a oh, thing. Okay. So then that's why I think that you could do a mm -hmm. hard eyes response to one of the stories as a little appetizer for okay. Dirk. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you know, that's, I think that's, yeah, the appetizer. Feeding the, yeah. that's feeding the guinea pig. Yeah. That's okay. So Dirk is at home and he's getting, oh shit, hard eyes. Yeah. So actually, maybe she meant by that <laughs> last thing that she's actually down. Right. But then he doesn't know for sure. And he's wondering, where are you at, girl? And what you're about to do is say, I'm coming to your city Pull and up. I want to buy you a fucking steak. <laughs> <laughs> Sirloin I ribeye. love it. Yeah. Okay, beautiful. Well, you're amazing. Thank you for calling in. You're going to be great. Much and, love. Uh, I'm excited for this next opportunity for you and Dirk. Thank you so much. It was so good to talk to both of you. Lovely to chat with you. You have the best day. I'll talk have to you later. Have a good one. Peace, peace. All right, bye. Thank you. Bye. Oh, boy. Man, yeah. young love. I know. There's nothing more fun than a calculated flirt. Woo. That, for us, anyway. That pressure. I love it because to me also, like, for her, she was like, oh, my gosh, like, I messed it up. And to me, I'm thinking, like, you kind of cool played it. 
Like it's not a what I would have done. Cool. Well, a, a li- but she did a hard eyes, hard eyes. Thank you, hard eyes emoji. Yeah. To Dirk, but that's sort of like also there's a power imbalance because Dirk was like a sort of semi famous person, right? And she was like a fan of that person. Right. So it's good to kind of tip the scales a little because you don't want Dirk to be like, yeah, I just fucking rule and whatever. I don't True. know what Dirk's like, but I'm saying that if you're like an influencer type person, yeah. and you're pulling someone from your community. You want to make sure that the scales are even. True, true, true. You, you, you. Everything you're saying is correct. I, ooh, scary. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's so. Sc- I just remember, like, yeah, it's so scary to, especially when you're in a new relationship or something, or a possible crush, just yeah. to send texts that are like semi flirty, but yep. it's like, are we flirting? Are we friends? I don't even know. Yeah, is it? Oh, is it this love language. Uh, I'm happy I don't have to play that game anymore. Oh my god, I think about that all the time. <laughs> yeah. My friend my friends are like single and they're like, Yeah, I don't know. Like she said that she might want to do something casual, but I maybe it's real and it's just like I'm so glad that I just am married and don't have to worry about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean I could, we do it for fun. Yeah. And when yeah. we flirt, it's just sport. It's Ooh. just fun. There's no pressure. I don't ever think that it's she doesn't like me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just fun. Um, all right, let's call one more person back here. Let's do it. We got a great one about someone who has to write a speech for someone they don't like. Ah, uh, chat. GPT. Hi, Miles. I am in a pickle. I am a maid of honor at a wedding. In less than a month, here's a twist. It's for someone I don't really like. So I don't know how to write a speech that's like nice, short, cute. So if you could help me write a speech, that'd be amazing. Thank you so much. Okay, wow. we got to write a wedding speech here for someone that they don't like. I love it. This and we're going to master manipulate it so that it gives her the best outcome. Hell, it's so juicy. <laughs> oh, I love this. Hello? Hello, you called perfect person because you need help writing a speech and I'm here with Quazy James to help you write it. Yo, no up? way. Oh my gosh, wait. I need to take this call. Sorry, I'm, I'm about to do a flash mob for something. Okay, I can't do that. <laughs> Um, okay, wait, I'm running, I'm running. People still oh doing flash mobs out here. That's what's up. You're still doing <laughs> you're, you're still doing flash I didn't know flash mobs are still around. That's what's, what's up. What's the flash mob for? No, I'm about to do a flash mob for like a city, whatever, but yeah, I just ran away. So it's okay. <laughs> I need to take this call. Miles, I, I want to tell mob. you that one time my friends and I were Googling nicknames for Miles because she was dating a guy named Miles. Yeah. So Meeky Cat is the number one nickname, and I thought you just need to know, to know that. Meeky Cat? That's a really weird nickname for my. Sorry, <laughs> Meeky Cat. Meeky Cat. Yeah, you. It's like Googleable. Meeky Cat. Okay, interesting. Well, I guess I know what my wife's gonna be calling me when I get home. Ah, uh, yeah. Hey, Meeky Cat. <laughs> I don't know where Cat's coming hey, from, by the cat. way. No idea. But anyway, um, thank you so much for calling in. We're gonna give you a fake name, and it's gonna be. Shaniqua. Shaniqua. Shaniqua, thank you for okay. calling into the show. Shaniqua, can you please tell me what your situation is going on? Yeah, so I'm the maid of honor at my sister's wedding, except we have like a really, really rough, not rough relationship, but it's just she's like 20 years older than me and she's a doctor and super successful and like mm. hasn't, hasn't talked to me since I was a little kid. And oh, like totally not a part of my life at all. And then all of a sudden she was like, Hey, will you be the maid of honor at my wedding? <gasps> and I was like, wow, no. <laughs> you said and then no? I, That's what's up. Keep that. Well, I, did. I was like, I was like, I felt really bad because you know, I wanted to be there to support her, but also she just never was a part of my life. So yeah. I was really caught off guard. Totally. And so how do I write? A, I said yes, eventually. Cause my parents were like, come on, Shaniqua. Like, you should do it like you want this relationship. <laughs> yeah. Come on, Shaniqua. So, you got to do it. Well, yes, because I really want a relationship with her. She's just so much older. So how do I write a speech for someone that I feel like I don't really know? Okay. Do you, mm-hmm. And you said you don't really know her. Do you like your sister? Um, I know in the voicemail I said I didn't like her. I think it's more just like, you know, she was off at like med school so early that I right. never got to know her. Gotcha. So it's kind of like... I. Always was kind of like, oh, I don't like her because she just never was around. Yeah, yeah, no, I like never came to any of like any of like my tournaments or anything like that when I was in high school, and Mm -hmm. now I'm in college, so it's like 
feels kind of late. Right. So you feel like it's like she didn't support you when you were younger. And so now you don't really know her and your experience with her was mostly absent. Mm. So it's like she hasn't done the work to get to know you. And she was the older person who probably had more availability and will to get to know you. Mm. Yeah, totally. Gotcha. I'm going to start walking back towards the flash mob. I'm worried they're going to start, but keep going. Oh yeah. If you need to flash mob, you can just start dancing. (laughs) (laughs) Start dancing with the phone and we'll just stay on the line. I think it's okay. Um, okay. Yeah. So I would say, uh, that's a tough situation to be in, but I think like yeah. the best way to think about this is what would you want if you were in her situation? Oh my gosh. So if that's you're actually really good advice, if you advice. are her and the only, also I would imagine that the reason she's asking you is because she doesn't have close friends. She feels confident in asking or she has a lot of close friends, but she doesn't want to pick one. And it's often a default op- default option for brides to pick the sister because it's like, oh, I know yeah. I have to have a braid- I made of honor, but I don't want to pick between my two best friends or whatever. So I'm just going to pick my sister and no one's going to be mad at me. Or she wants a relationship with you. Yeah. yeah, I guess it's kind of sweet now that I think about it. Yeah, or she wants oh, she probably does want a relationship with you. Way to do the prank wrong. Oh, sorry. Say that again. The flash mob. Is that the flash mob? They said five minutes. Oh, I'm good. I'm going to take another walk. Oh, hell yeah. Okay. Got five minutes. Yeah, five yeah. minutes. All right. Yeah. We're going to solve your problem in five yeah. minutes or less. Okay. So here's okay. what I'm going to say. Ladies and gentlemen of the wedding, thank you so much for coming. My sister obviously is older than me. <laughs> That's funny. The old the old freaking cow. Uh, just kidding. Just oh, kidding. I can make a joke about her being old. I yeah. can make a joke about her being older. So it's like when you guys were, um, <laughs> like, it's like, yeah, hey, when, when my sister was doing amazing things in surgery, I was also doing amazing things in middle school, learning algebra. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> make a joke about you know that what I mean like so funny. make a joke about you the age disparity there and uh it's also like you know people to me a great speech at a wedding is about teasing things that everyone knows about the person yeah. and then bringing it home with something that people don't expect to know about the person ups and downs yeah. highs and lows ups and downs and tell a secret mm-hmm. literally the key to any fucking speech ups downs and tell a secret that nobody knows and it's like it could be a small Up, little down, story tell a secret it's also, by the way, tell a story about you and your sister. Yep. And it doesn't have to be a deep story, yep. but then you re- unravel the deepness from it. Is there one thing from your memory that you remember okay. with your sister? Um. Well, this is kind of, yeah. Well, like we would sing like when I was really, really little and she'd be babysitting, she, we would sing like sister songs. I feel like that's kind of cute. Like, like what? What, what song? That's cute. It was one Michael Bublé one, but I don't remember what it was called. Right. So get that song and yeah. finish the speech that way. Just sing the first lyrics and have her sing along, and hopefully everyone will sing along too. <laughs> okay, by the way, or maybe I'll quote it. You no, uh, by the way, fan, ju- you're right where I'm at. Crazy, love yeah. what you're doing with singing. By the way, though, yeah, <laughs> I should, I, we got fire, yo. We got some shit. <laughs> I think you gotta go. Okay. As in the words of Michael Bublé, you can, you know what you can start it off? The beginning of the speech goes, as me, we used to sing these sister songs. In the words of Michael Bublé, and it's like a silly quote. And at the end, you go, in the words of Michael Bublé. And it's a part of the quote. It's like a part of the song that's actually like kind of serious and dr- like dramatic. It's like, in the words of Michael Bublé, like, you are the ones you love, the ones mm. you leave behind. And together, oh, we that's- should. Sweet. You know okay. I mean? But then Wait, the beginning. You feel better about the situation. At the beginning, yeah. you could literally be like, in the words of Michael Bublé, ba da ba 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 ba, I'm loving it. You know, like <laughs> some like stupid part. And then at the very end, you end it. So it's that way. You have the you like the beginning and the cli- and then the climax, and then at the end, and you're yeah. you're starting and ending with Bublé. Yep. I think you're going to do a great job. Heart and funny. Yeah. Heart and funny. Heart and funny. Heart and funny. And I think that yeah, take this as a compliment okay. from your sister that she wants to get to know you. Yeah. Okay. And, and also, well, put I'm that in the speech. Mom. Put that in the speech. It's like, I oh, yeah. okay. want such, I want a better relationship with both of you. Yeah. You got to go to the, sp- you got to go to the flash mob. I do. Thank you so much. I love you both. Love you, Crazy. Love you, uh, Miles. Right, thank you, Kat. You. You're the best. Get back in there and dance and have a great speech. Peace, peace. Okay. Thank you. Bye. 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 Ooh. We just changing the lives around here. Changing lives. Literally lives. five oh. minutes or less. Oh. We will change your life in five minutes or oh, less. Perfect person. I literally I want to do so badly a uh a telethon where people call in for moments like that where yeah. it's like, all right, five minutes. What's your problem? <laughs> yeah. I solve it. Moving on. Ah, uh, positive energy. Ah, uh, I'm yeah. I <sighs> you give have you given some wedding speeches? Oh, no, no. I'm bad with speeches. Oh, man. Yeah, I get so freaking nervous. Really? That's so surprising to me because you're such a, like, charismatic speaker. Nervous. My, uh, (laughs) 
What, how do you pronounce it? Vowels? Vowels? What do you say when you up there with your wife? Yeah, vowels. Vowels, yeah. That, no, wait, sorry. Vowels? Vowels. Vowels. Because vowels I is like you were, a... I thought you were saying, thought you were saying I, vowels. Yeah, that's like... Yeah, vowels. Vowels? vowels. vowels. Trash. Really? Trash. And I had two chances to do it because we got married twice. Trash. What was that about it? Oh, she... She said... <laughs> she, she bought us vowels books. Yeah. And um, she started writing three, four months before the wedding. Yeah. The first wedding. She said every time we got in an argument, she got in an argument with me and she got upset, she would write into this book how much she loves me. Aww. And she quoted all that fly shit. Like, it was fire. <laughs> I was like, damn, this so is- So she blew you out of the water. Oh my yeah, gosh. Right, absolutely. I started writing the day of the wedding. Yeah. Now that's common. So it is hitting, it's hitting points. Like, man, you're so cool. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> your vows. All right, I'm ready for my vows. Yeah. You're so cool. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Let's get married, Thank babe. you. Um, man, thanks. <laughs> oh, and it, it, it was horrible. It, it was a live streamed. <laughs> it was live streamed? It was live streamed because uh, we have family in the Caribbean. We got married oh, during nice. COVID. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so people couldn't come. So we had to like, live wow, stream it. Oh, yeah. That was the first wedding. And the second, at, the second wedding was... COVID was a little less of a yeah, thing. So right. we had the, a bigger wedding mm -hmm. and uh, I had to say a speech. Bomb that as well. <laughs> you know, I, I, I literally Same said- speech or different speech? New speech. Oh, different speech. I just, I literally said one sentence. I was like, um, yeah, today we're celebrating, but I'm in for, I'm in for this forever. Drop the mic. <laughs> and then, Crazy, what it the was hell? That's garbage. so interesting. It was so trash. What makes you nervous about it? Is it that you're going to mess up or you're not going to be able to uh, put all of your thoughts into like one little thing? I don't know. No, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I got bars. I have <laughs> bars. You're, by the way, you're one of the people that when I talk to you constantly, you're saying things that I'm like, I should get that tattooed on my fucking <laughs> body. Thank you. I just feel like you're very like, you have a lot of good stuff to say. Thanks. And it's usually very like concise. I, I got bars. I'll be saying some you, shit. Yeah, exactly. I'll so be saying scary. some shit. And, but it's not, <laughs> but not when like it's showtime. Yeah. Like for instance, right? One, one of the most genuine things <laughs> I told my wife before we got married was like, hey, loving you is like breathing. That's great. It's that easy. It's yeah. like breathing. It's like, man, you're just like, you just make me just like feel better. You make me feel alive. And it's easy yeah. to the most basic point. Man, I love this human being. Yeah, right. In the wedding? Nah. <laughs> it wasn't like that. It was. <laughs> you should have said that. I know. I was tearing up. You should have said that. I forgot that shit. That's me freestyling <laughs> it, yo. Because I like, damn, I really love you, hot chocolate. That's what I call it. That's, that's so cute. Yeah. I that's so funny. I honestly one of the, the feelings I had. I don't remember if this was my vows or not, but I just remember like I think I just told Sarah after the first couple of years of us dating. I was like, man, being in love is like you realize that like all the cliched stuff that people say is true. Mm. You're just like every cliche from a movie that's just like, oh, like you know, I love you more than the universe or whatever, or like. Yeah. Just like all the things people say about love in movies that feels trite because you see it a million times. I love you 3,000. Yeah, I love you 3,000. It's just like, oh, this all just is true. Like mm -hmm. when you have like a big feeling like that, I also feel that way about having a, a, a child where like uh, having a child for me, I think I said this on Perfect Person at some point, but having a child for me was like, oh, all the things that people say mm. that it feels like, oh, that's such a cliche. Like that's just like what everyone says. Yeah. It, it just is true. Yeah, because like, they did this. You do, I was like, I did love him immediately. Or I did, you know, you look at him and you see like this world and it's like so magnificent to what, like it's like, I don't know. It's because because it's such a common human experience, one, to get married and yeah. two, to be able to, um, you know, see a little child grow up. Yeah. It's such a common experience. So of course other people have like put into words what it means in yeah. a way that resonates with you. Oh man, what a feeling. Yeah, it was really. You really loved fun. Your son, yeah. As soon as you saw him, I did, yeah. With snot and all of it, all yeah, of it was crazy. I, although, and then that's not. I mean, there's a lot of people that's not the case for that. Yeah. They're like, actually, it took me a while to warm up to, you know, or they because it's a very disorienting experience. Yeah, but uh, for me, anyways, I just felt that uh, as soon as yeah, I saw him, it was just like, oh my god, like I have to protect this little wow. thing, which is very weird. Wow, it's uh, that's beautiful. That's kind of amazing. Man. That's 
beautiful. Yeah. And, and I like, yeah, that's like one of the feelings. And then you, you just have this feeling of like, I have to protect this little thing and Mm -hmm. I want to hold, you know, before my son, every time somebody handed me a baby, I would be like, Oh, this is, (laughs) thank you. That's why. Okay. I think I did five seconds and I'm actually ready to hold in the baby back. But, um, then it's, you know, when he came, yeah, when he came, I was just like, I, I, yeah, I just want to hold him all the time. But so, um, that's so cool. I don't know. Yeah, it's interesting. That's so cool. Well, crazy. We're sort of, you know, j- getting real right now, but we have one more final segment. What up? And it's a segment we like to call Get Real. Let's do it. Let's get real. Ah, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, crazy. Yo, thanks for doing the show. This is a segment uh, where we force a genuine moment in an effort to learn more about each other and ourselves. And uh, I'm wondering for you, crazy, what is a what is the piece? You're always full of, uh, you're chock full of wisdom. Yeah. You're one of the wisest people I know. And uh, what's something that you have been wowed by r- recently in like a quiet moment when you're sort of thinking or what's something that you've been really impressed by? It could be a person. It could be an idea. It could be a state of being or something from your own experience that you've been really like floored by recently. Wow. Um, everything matters, but doesn't matter. Okay. At the same time. Yeah. Like the goals that I accomplish mm-hmm. are really great. Yeah. But when they're accomplished, I'm just happy about the process yeah. opposed to crossing a finish line. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's like, like for me, goals are just a direction mm-hmm. opposed to like an end result. Yeah. So I started a merch company. Yeah, yeah. Adds in hydration, struck it makes me thirsty. Mm-hmm. That's good. It's up. You know. All right. What am I gonna do next? Type thing. Yeah. yeah. And I'm not. I'm not. Not the most. I don't celebrate that much after I accomplish and finish something that I wanted to do. But I love the feeling of, and the fear and the uncertainty, of the process going through it. Yeah, that's what I realized. Do you feel like you should celebrate more? I don't know. I, I, so, cause I also I am feeling like we passed a year doing the show. Yeah. We did this episode 54, I think. And, uh, I was like, fuck, I, I would have liked to have had like a, like a party or like a dinner with a lot of the people who've been on the show or something to be like, I did this for a year. That's really cool. Like, yeah. and I didn't. And I, uh, I have a lot of stuff going on and I am feeling this feeling that's like, I want to celebrate these small wins that I have. Mm. And I'm the same way where I try, and it's important to remember because the journey, because the goals are just a direction, that you really have to like the process. Mm. And I'm trying as much as possible in my own life that if I don't like the process of something, that I can't do it. I, I can't do it. And, and in many different ways, I'm trying to make the process as good as the end result. Right. And I think that's true for work. Mm. I think that's true for like, if you're at a job and there's a bad environment or something like that, or if you're working on a project and or if you're writing something and you don't like the writing of it, mm-hmm. <laughs> then figure out a way to like the writing of it. Right. Like you can't be burning yourself out that it's like one day I'm going to have this book and that's going to be good. Yeah. Cause it might not be. Is Exactly. You have to enjoy the experience along the way. And, uh, and then, yeah, when you get there, sometimes you have to celebrate. I'm bad at that as well. I'm horrible at celebrating. I'm 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 more built to like when I climb the mountain. It's like all right, I'm gonna go back down the mountain and climb it again. Yeah, right. Yeah. Start something new. So start something new. Yeah. Yeah. S- sustaining mm-hmm. what I've accomplished as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're 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 process people. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, I I like the I think it's also. Um, for so many of my projects, I don't know that they'll, especially working on the internet, I don't know that they will amount to something huge. Mm-hmm. I don't know if they won't even exist at all. Like, if you're writing something, you don't know if you'll finish it. So, if you don't enjoy the process, that stuff could never happen. Right. Or, the other thing I think about is, I could get hit by a bus tomorrow. Boom. So, I might as I, I have to enjoy the process of my day-to-day life. So, if I don't enjoy the process, then, uh, catastrophic stuff catastrophic 
stuff, yeah. <laughs> as I said earlier, yeah. stuff happens that prevents you from enjoying the end results. You exactly. just have to, you know. And like, yeah, and you hit by bus now. Did, did, did everything else before that matter? Right? Yeah, did right. All the goals, all the things you accomplish, does it really matter? Kind of, but doesn't. Life is going to go on. Yeah, In right. In your little world. Yeah, right. You're doing the thing. You're doing the best you can and you're living. And hopefully, I would say the best thing about accomplishing things is inspiring people because you're just being yourself. That's fucking fresh. Yeah. Like you inspire me just by you doing you because like, yo, it's like, oh yeah, I I should, I like to start a podcast. That's pretty fucking yeah, yeah. cool. That's very sweet. Yeah. And you're just doing you. I try, man. I, yeah. I, uh, I think it's, uh, especially in the long form podcast, you know, what's funny is I tried to make a YouTube video the other day and mm-hmm. I, I was, I put the camera and I was like, honestly, I was sitting four feet from where we're sitting right now, mm-hmm. different seat looking at the camera. And I was like, <laughs> and I got I like, it's funny where you get comfortable and where you get like fro- frozen up. And I was yeah. like, oh, wait, I, I have to make, I'm like t- looking at the camera, making a video. Whereas on this, I've talked for over a fucking year yeah. of hour, I, every, an hour every week yeah. is like me out there. Man. And, I, and I couldn't be more comfortable in a podcast set. Cause it's like, you know, we're looking eye to eye. It's just yeah. a very different environment. But, uh, but yeah, I, I've tried. I've tried my best to try to be able to find what I like about myself, and then um, make that what the content is. Versus try to find what other people might like about me and make that. And that's what makes us so freaking lucky. Yeah, I, the opportunity to find that and just do yeah. that. No, totally. Man, the conversations you have, the same way that I view love, it's like breathing. It's that easy. Yeah, it's unforced. Right. You're not going against the current. You're flowing with it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I, I know. I'm trying also my uh, another new uh, <laughs> another new piece of wisdom, guys. <laughs> is uh, <laughs> is that I'm, I want to live an interesting life, mm. so I make interesting content. Hell yeah! And I am trying to do that more and more instead of trying to make interesting content. And then let like put that first and then be like, and then I'll live my life. It's like, no, I want to just ha- fill my life with cool stuff yeah. and make the content around, oh, I'm doing this interesting thing and I get to bring a camera along and do that part of it right? versus trying to like change my entire life to try to do something that's not really fitting the rest of my lifestyle or not benefiting the life part, you know? Then come to Thailand with me. That sounds sick. When do you, I, when do you go to Thailand? I told you already, yo. You need to tell me this. Yo, come on, man. Why you don't want to come to Thailand with me, yo? <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you a question. I have a baby. <laughs> yeah, no. I'd yo. love to go to Thailand. Fuck Next it. year. Next year? February 2nd. All right, guys. Tune in. Me and Nick Crazy are going to Thailand. February to February 9th. <laughs> like a whole week. And then we're not even doing like all the beat stuff. We're doing like we're going to Thailand. food market stuff. and like Oh, fuck. That's sick. Going into the mountains of Thailand. Temples. Come on, yo. Bring cup. That sounds Your child's going to be practically 18 by next year. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, what are you talking about? You can come to Thailand with us. Let me come, yeah, come to Thailand with me. But yeah, um, man, I love doing the show. Thank you so much for having me. Um, of course, yeah. Yeah, this is, uh, you're, you're inspiring. Nice. You're, keep doing what you're doing. I see that, that the, with this show, mm-hmm. you're being authentically yourself in the most way possible and people love it. And that's just like, that's when you hit the fucking jackpot. That's very sweet of you, man. Yeah. I, I do really appreciate that. And yeah. uh, I, uh, I love having you on the show. I love chatting with you. You, uh, you inspire me. You're mm. always full of positivity and uh, yeah, I, I appreciate seeing you. There we go. Hats and hydrations.com. Hats and hydrations.com. Oh, hydrations with an S. Oh, well, um, hats and hydration. Shun. Hats but and hydrations.com. Yeah. And uh, where, what's your Instagram? My Instagram is Kwesi, K-W-E-S-I underscore James, J-A-M-E-S. Hit At me up. Kwesi yeah. underscore James. Hit up Kwesi. Yeah. Come to Thailand with me too if you want to come to Thailand. <laughs> yeah, it's on the, it's on Everybody's Instagram. going to Kwesi's Thailand trip. Let's do it. Um, uh, thanks for doing the show, man. And, Much love. Uh, as always, if you're at home and you're struggling with the problem, remember that no matter where you are or who you are, perfection is only a call away. That was a HeadGum Podcast.